question I've started with a lot is what was the role of music in your childhood? Well, uh, you know, growing up, I, I seem to remember until I was probably in middle school. From the time I can remember until I was in middle school, I had my own radio in my room. And I would listen to music every night, like when I went to bed. I would just, when I got into my room for the evening or whatever, I would just turn on the local country radio station in San Antonio and uh, listen to music for you know, an hour or two before bed. Um, that was like the most consistent thing, but I was always involved in making music uh, throughout my childhood. I, I took piano lessons early on. I was in church choir uh, and then middle school choir and high school choir. I didn't start playing guitar until I was a senior in high school, but um, I play. I was actually in band in middle school. I played saxophone for two years, but I uh, I don't tell a whole lot of people that up until now. I was going to say it's uh, public knowledge. <laughs> it's not that I don't want people to know. I just if somebody put a saxophone in my hands right now, I would have no clue how to play it. I just uh, I haven't I haven't spent any time with it since seventh grade. So. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean that, you know, I was always listening to music. My parents were big into music. Uh, we had a record player and, and a, you know, a system that we listened to uh, all the time. Mom mom was real big into James Taylor, Simon Garfunkel, the Eagles. My, they, my uh, parents both were big Eagles fans. Uh, and they, they definitely rubbed that off on me. Um, but... It was always around, and Dad's family is in a different type of music. They they uh, are in, do bands, you know, high school and middle school bands. They're band directors. Uh, two of my uncles are band directors. My grandfather was a band director. Um, so they've been in that sort of music for a long time. Uh, but as soon as I started playing guitar, I, I kind of veered off into a different type of music. But still music, still good. I'm you know I, I'm I'm sure they. Uh, Enjoy it just as much as as their music. You know. <laughs> it's all it's all music. Music is love. That's that's a big thing in our family for sure. I like that. Music is love. How do you when you say that sentence? What does that mean? Man, um, <clears throat> that was one of the the uh, the things I feel like I learned the most from my grandfather uh, about music. Just how. It affects everybody. I mean, there are certain people in the world, I guess, that don't really listen to music. They don't get it. Uh, but I don't understand those people. Yeah, we don't hang out. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, it's just the uh, the love of music and, and how you can just change somebody's entire mood uh, just by playing a song or telling them about a song or something. And, it, you know, no matter what walk of life you're in, music always, you know, brings people together, and, uh, that was certainly the, <clears throat> the thing, one of the things that I learned most about from, uh, my grandfather, just the love that music can provide, you know, inside yourself and for other people. How do you try to keep that alive in your current career? Because things are going really well right now, so your last show is really great, radio success, how do you try to incorporate that basic music is love into your career right now? Well, uh, I think that for the most part, I just try and, and produce music that makes me happy, that I love, uh, that, that means something. I mean, the, the biggest compliment I could get as a songwriter and a musician is for somebody to tell me that they, they, they were moved by a song that, or they, they felt like I wrote it about them, you know, uh, that's just, I don't know, one of the coolest things for me that I get out of music. You know, I can listen to something and be like, holy crap, dude. I mean, this guy is like, he's talking about my life right now. This is what's happening. And being moved by music is is ultimately what I'm trying to do for other people, move other people with my music. And uh, as long as I can keep producing music that I love, hopefully the people that listen will love to. 
good for a long time. <laughs> and you have been moving people because uh, the first two of this this record, uh, which was the reason we first talked, um, the Bad Reputation record, the first songs, two songs off of that, mm -hmm. hit number one in the biggest country music market in the country, and therefore <laughs> also the world. Um, how did that? It's always like a silly question. Like, how did that feel? Well, it felt good, uh, <laughs> but did it feel more? validation or did it feel more um okay that's just one milestone off the list now i have other things to shoot for well i mean there's a fair amount of validation for sure i mean uh that's that's what we're we're shooting for whether you say it or not i mean I, that's not my sole purpose in life is to have number ones but anytime that you can you can uh be recognized for something like that it's really cool but at the same time it is just you know uh a, a small milestone, hopefully, in a a long career of similar milestones. I mean, that's that's what I'm hoping. Uh, just just the beginning, you know. We've we've had uh, some really cool things happen, and I'm very grateful for that. Uh, but uh, I'm I'm by no means satisfied with just those. You know, I hope, hope to be able to to have a lot more. Since you bring up the idea of satisfaction, I recently heard somebody say it, and I'm really, I wish I could remember who it was, but they asked him if he was satisfied with something, and he said, I'll never be satisfied, I'm a musician. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, exactly right. Is that not just the truth? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, so many times, like, you know, we'll, we'll be playing a show, and I feel like that was the best we've ever done, and then somebody will come off and one of the guys on the stage, or in the band will come off stage and they'll be like, man, I just, I blew this one part, I could have done it better, you know, and I just, and I was, but sometimes, on the other hand, like, the other guys in the band, they'll come off stage and they're like, man, we really kicked ass, that was a great show, and then I'll think back to some line that I flubbed, or some guitar part that I didn't quite get right, or something, so, we can always uh, nitpick our performances, you know, there's always room for improvement, but, um, uh, you know, sometimes, satisfied with the performance as a whole, sure, yeah, we did great, it was awesome, but there's always a little bit that you can <laughs> do better. Having a music career is an inherently emotionally unhealthy thing to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not to everybody's detriment, <clears throat> but the best way I've ever heard it described is my favorite songwriter, which is James Taylor, so I'm with your mom on this, um, who said, I am myself for a living. And I thought about that a lot, and I thought, wow, that explains so many things. Because most people can go to work, and they go be an accountant, or a lawyer, or a mechanic, yeah. or, and then they come home, and they're themselves. But when you're a creative person, as a musician, you're yourself everywhere. There mm -hmm. isn't that divide between work and normal that's, life. That's very true. Um, how do you try to balance that? Because you need some sort of private privacy and private time. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what we have our friends friends for and family. You know, it's always good to come back to to people that treat you the same. They don't care that you just played for 5,000 people or that, you know, or they, that you just played for four people or whatever it is. They just, they're going to treat you the same that they have their whole lives. And being able to keep those people around for a long time, I feel like, is a very necessary part of keeping your sanity. I mean, just having close friends that you can just get away from everything with. And, you know, you don't want to talk about music at all. You don't want to talk about anything music-related. You just want to shoot the shit with your buddies, you know, or, or hang out with your grandfather or your grandmother or whatever. Just bring it back home. And <clears throat> I've been very fortunate to have a great supportive family um, and... So, you know, getting to, to hang with them whenever I get the chance is always appreciated. But, you know, the other guys in the band, too, they're they're all friends, and there's no egos, uh, which is probably the coolest part of the group of guys that I've got, that, that we're, we've got playing together. It's just, uh, <clears throat> they're all really cool in their own ways, you know, and uh, that we, we keep each other centered, I guess, and insane you know it's mm -hmm. it's uh it's nice having close friends around that you get to play with yeah 
it's good that he's joining us again for this next question. <laughs> <laughs> because the, as much as it's important, I think, to having that personal life, that space to go to, um, you probably also need that in your professional team. You need people who can talk you out of a bad idea. Oh, yeah. And not just tell you everything you're doing is great. Oh, yeah. Um, how do you see that um, part of your career where you need strong management who are also going to get in your face if yeah. need be? Yeah, no, I mean, that's that's been uh, one of my uh, most fortunate, uh, one of the most fortunate things that's, that's happened for me, I feel like. Uh, just ever since I started playing, I've had people around me that are smart, and they have good ideas, but they're also willing to uh, to shut me down if they feel like something that I'm doing isn't right, or if I get <clears throat> to where I feel like something that I'm doing is good enough, and then you know they hold me to a higher standard, and that's just you can't you can't pay for that, you can't buy that, you know, and to have that sort of uh, support, but at the same time tough love or uh, a boot in the ass is is just I mean, it's awesome. I mean, it, it might not always be comfortable when it's happening, but uh, <clears throat> it's all for the greater good, and it's a uh, you know very very blessed to have people like that around me in my camp in many different places, from management to booking to radio promotion, and even the different guys in the band, you know. Uh, we have have good ideas and bad ideas, but the ability to, to talk it through is is uh, really really good for, for us as a whole to continue to grow. What brings it back? So when you have those moments and you think you have the better idea and management kind of disagrees, what is it that makes you or makes you able to uh, say, oh, you know what? Let let me wait a minute. Let me listen instead of trying to force my own idea through. Um, what kind of, what is it that you, is it just experience, they've made the right call before, so I'm going to trust them to do it now, is it something that yeah. you were raised with, the ability to listen to advice? Um, well, that's, you know, there again, we just kind of talk it through and see what the best uh, choice is, I mean, a lot of this, honestly, is based on gut decisions, I mean, just things that, ways that we feel, we have a hunch about something, or, uh, you know, we think it's a great idea. A lot of times that'll happen. Like you think of something that's just awesome. We got to do this right now, but then you don't think of the the bad. Like if you're exposing yourself or you're doing something that you don't want to do later, uh, you might regret later. But <clears throat> uh, you know, just talking it out, having people that you trust around uh, is is key. But also, I mean. With different things, I mean, we can talk about stuff in the band, like if it's, who knows what kind of decision it makes, but we can have, you know, little, like, mini focus groups or whatever, we'll just weigh the pros and cons, uh, but, yeah, having those those checks and balances, uh, it's definitely a good thing, and they, they come in different ways, they don't always, uh, it's not always just one conversation. It can be from different places. I don't know. You just weigh the odds, think about it, make a good, educated decision, hope for the best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In a way, I think it also, especially if you're performing as a solo artist, it <clears throat> takes a lot of pressure off of you. It's not mm -hmm. all about you. You know, there are other people whose opinion matters just as much, and they're shown that their opinion matters just as much. Yeah. Um, how do you see, compared to when you first started, um, how do you see those relationships change as you grow and as the success develops? Does it get harder to have those relationships be that respectful and egalitarian, or does it get easier? I feel like it's gotten easier, to be honest. I mean, uh, it's nice as things have, have gone on, you know. I'm, I'm definitely not a micromanager. I don't like to to make everything happen on my own. I, I, I would much prefer for everybody else to operate... Uh, and have everything just go together and work fine and I can just come in and do my thing whenever I need to. It's 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 nice not having to make all the decisions. Uh, <clears throat> but, you know, the trust factor was there from the beginning and I feel like that's the, the hardest thing to come by. Uh, and 
it's, you know, as long as you trust people and they've got everyone's best interests in mind, uh, you know, you can't really fail. You can maybe do things that, uh, find out ways you can do things better, but if everyone's got the best of intentions and we all agree on something, I, I wouldn't blame it. I blame anybody for making a wrong decision if we found out later, you know, it's just, uh, one of those things. You live and you learn, but, um, Fortunately for us, we haven't made a whole lot of bad decisions that I can remember anyway. So hopefully we can keep that going for a while. <laughs> we got a good That's, we got a good streak. <laughs> that is the secret: is don't make bad decisions. Or don't make too many of them in a row. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta <laughs> you make bad decisions every once in a while, but just follow them up with good. Because then you learn. Yeah. <laughs> when the insecurity does show up, because it does for everyone at some point, what form does it tend to take? For you, well, what is it that you tend to question? I mean, most of the insecurity that I had early on was was just uh, it seemed to be the moments before the show started. It was like I booked this, and this is early on, like first couple of years I was playing, and uh, I'd have you know I played a ton of acoustic shows, open mics, and various bars and clubs and things, but. You know, the first probably 50 or 100 gigs, I would, you know, I'd book the show, everything would be cool. The days leading up to it, I'd tell all my friends and trying to get them to come out. And then I'd show up, the day of the show, I'd get there to the venue and I'd just have this like pit in my stomach. Like, I just hated that I put myself in this position. It's like, why did you do this? You could be sitting at home right now watching TV or hanging out with your friends or drinking beer. You could be doing whatever you want to do, but you're got yourself here. Now you got to play. And, but once I started playing, all that just went out the window. The first song or two, I might have had a little flutter, some, some, you know, irregular breathing. <laughs> but, um, as soon as I started playing a couple songs in, I mean, I'm at home. This is what I'm supposed to do. Uh, and so that was, I got over that, you know, fairly quickly, I guess, uh, but, you know, sometimes the other insecurities would come out, like when I was in the uh, writing rooms for the first time. When I first came up to Nashville and started writing with people that I'd never met before. Uh, and just getting in a room with what, you know, I felt like some of these people are just like, I've heard their songs, I've seen their work, I've, I've, uh, I've listened to their stuff on the radio, and here I am writing a song with them. And just kind of nerve-wracking, thinking, what do I have to, what do I have to say that's, that's going to impress this guy? I mean, he's had number ones on the radio. What can I possibly bring to the table? But after a while, you just got to realize that, I don't know, I mean, I wouldn't have gotten asked to come here if I didn't have something that they were interested in. So, um, there you go. Then you sit down and you just get through the awkward hellos and conversations with people that you don't know and you sit down and start coming up with ideas and uh, it was nerve wracking at first and every once in a while it still kind of is when I get in a room with somebody that I've never written with before but uh, they uh, they work themselves out after a few minutes usually and things aren't so bad but uh, other than that man I don't think Every once in a while there's insecurities that I'll have if we're playing a new song that we haven't played before. Uh, you know, even if we've rehearsed it a thousand times, just getting in front of people for the first time and playing it, everything's different when the lights are on. So uh, that's another type of insecurity that I'll have every once in a while. But I don't know. I feel like I'm a fairly confident person. I hope it doesn't come off as egotistical, <laughs> but... <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, you know, fairly confident in what I do, so I can remain comfortable most of the time. <laughs> There's a, what I find interesting is in all three of the examples you gave, you give an example of that vulnerability, that is it going to be good enough, am mm -hmm. I worthy enough to be with this writer, and in all three examples, the thing that pulls you out of it is that self-belief, that yeah. you talk yourself into, you sort of go well, yeah, I love playing live, I'll be okay after two songs. Well, you know, this 
20 number ones ago, that guy was also just starting. Like, yeah. Of course I have a right to be here. What is the core of that self-belief? Do you know where that came from? Man, I don't. I, I It started <laughs> it started really young. I mean, I, I always just... Singing was something that I did before I could talk, really. I mean, I feel like... I don't remember this, is what I've been told, but... Um, I was as soon as I learned how to whistle, I was just the whistling. I was the whistlingest fool you ever met. All, all, all through my younger years, and singing was something that I did just as much. And so I had a, you know, a good ear for music, and started singing. And I just started from a really early age, and I knew that I could, and I could hear things, and I could mimic uh, a lot of the things that I heard, and so. When it comes to singing, I've never really been... The only time that I'm self-conscious about it or so if I'm, you know, a little under the weather, I got a cough or I got some upper respiratory stuff happening, whatever. I had a rough night, didn't get much sleep, and I'm hoarse. <laughs> that's the only time that I'm really, like, worried about what I'm going to sound like or anything. And so that's probably where it comes from. Lucky for me, I get to do what I feel like I'm probably best at in the world for a living, and... So that's really where the confidence comes from. I mean, I'm I'm not sitting here saying that I feel like I'm the best. I know there's people out there that are better, uh, but I know what I can do, and uh, so far it's done me right. So I've done done okay with it. So I guess I'll just continue doing what I'm doing and uh, not not worry about what everybody else thinks <laughs> so much. That's another thing too. I've just never really been that concerned with what everybody else thinks. I mean, if you like if you like it, that's great. If you don't like it, that's cool too. I mean, I'm not. Everybody's got their uh, <clears throat> their opinions and you can share it with me if you like. It doesn't change my my mind one way or another. So, that's also a form of confidence to be able to I'm okay if somebody doesn't like my music, that's fine because yeah. I like it. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure you, you know, you come across people plenty of times who have the, who are in this business, not necessarily because of, but it becomes part of what they're chasing is recognition, validation, you know, everybody like me, please. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but you know, this, this type of artists and it's not necessarily just people starting out. I, you know, I sometimes see this with established artists too, that there's that anxiety of mm. what if they don't like it from a person who doesn't really have to strive for that. Like you do that naturally. What would you, advise um, younger artists who are starting out and have that anxiousness, how would you try to tell them, here's how you could chill out, you know, here's something you could do that might help you? Well, uh, for me, I feel like experience was the best teacher. I mean, I, you have to do a certain amount of practice and rehearsal on your own uh, if you're going to, if you hope to impress people. You can't just throw something together and hope for the best. You gotta, you know, develop some sort of confidence in yourself to where you can know this, at least the songs that you're playing well enough to do them without forgetting the words or <clears throat> missing a chord or something. Uh, but then, after that, I don't know, this doesn't really apply to all walks of life. I'm just focusing on the musicians right now. Mm -hmm. But uh, just get to where you're, you know, confident in your songs that you're going to play for people and then get out and do it. And, you know, the like I said, the, everything's different when the lights are on. It's it, when you're sitting in your living room playing for yourself or your dog or your girlfriend or your parents, whatever. That's cool. Uh, and you can learn a lot from that. But until you get to your where you're sitting on that stage and... Even if it's just bartenders, it doesn't matter. I mean, if there's somebody out there that isn't a friend of yours or is not interested in hearing you play, <laughs> that's another thing. You can learn so much from playing for people that don't care. They just hate it. They don't, they're only there because their friends are there or whatever, and then you're just playing for people that don't care, and that's when you just you learn a lot about yourself. Uh, I always found... I know I'm going off on lots of tangents here, but... No, no. I, uh, I always tried to find one person in the audience, and it seemed like I could. Every night that I played, there was always one person that was there. Maybe I knew him. It's better if you don't know him, though. 
if you find somebody that's digging it, you just not focus on them, don't stare at them because then they'll get freaked out, <laughs> but just use their energy to like fuel yourself. It's like, I can see this person's digging it. I'm going to sing my ass off if for nobody else than that person right there, you know? And if you do that, uh, the people that aren't paying attention will start to. I mean, if you can sell yourself and and people are believing what you're saying, you just want, you need to get somebody's attention, get them to focus on you, get them to believe what you're saying, and then that'll give you the confidence to do the things you need to do to capture everyone else's attention. And it, it all happens, you know, slowly and differently every night. This is probably getting confusing for everybody. I'm starting to get confused. But yeah, just, just find that one person, lock on to them, and play as much as you can. Uh, and that's that's just the best thing that I could, I could teach to people is just get out there and do it. Whether it's an open mic or a <sighs> frat party or somebody, even if it's just, you know, at the... Getting some friends together, if it's appropriate, uh, getting your friends together and sitting around on the back porch. We just did that last night. It was awesome. There's four or five other writers that we were with last night at my friend Brent's house, and we just sat around playing guitars for three or four hours, and it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's really cool. And uh, that playing for, for other people and strangers is the best way to develop confidence in yourself. Going through the motions helps, but it's always nice when you got somebody out there that you don't know. They don't know who you are. If you can win them over, 